Thank you, Steve, and uh, thanks for staying with us late this evening. Uh, President Trump and President Putin uh, met this afternoon for two hours and 15 minutes uh, here on the sidelines of the G20. Uh, the two leaders exchanged views on the, the current nature of the U.S.-Russia relationship and the future of the U.S.-Russia relationship. Uh, they discussed important progress that was made in Syria, and I think all of you have seen uh, some of the news that just broke regarding uh, an es a de escalation agreement and memorandum, which was agreed between the United States, Russia, and Jordan for an important area in southwest Syria that affects uh, Jordan's security, but also is a very complicated uh, part of the, uh, of the Syrian battlefield. Uh, this de-escalation area was agreed. Uh, it's well-defined agreements on who will secure this area. A ceasefire has been entered into, uh, and I think this is our first indication of the U.S. and Russia uh, being able to work together in Syria. And as a result of that, we had a very uh, lengthy discussion regarding other areas in Syria that we can continue to work together on to de-escalate uh, the areas and the violence once we defeat ISIS. Uh, and to work together towards a political process that will secure the future of the Syrian people. Um, as a result, at the request of, the, uh, of uh, President Putin, the United States has appointed, and you've seen, I think, the announcement of special representative for Ukraine, Ambassador Kurt Volker. Ambassador Volker will draw on his decades of experience uh, in the U.S. Diplomatic Corps, both at the, uh, as a representative to NATO and also uh, his time as, uh, as a permanent uh, political uh, appointment. The two leaders also acknowledged the challenges of cyber threats and interference in the democratic processes of the United States and other countries and agreed to explore creating a framework around which the two countries can work together to better understand how to deal with these cyber threats, both in terms of how these tools are used to interfere with the internal affairs of countries, but also how these tools are used to threaten uh, infrastructure, how these tools are used from a terrorism standpoint as well. The President opened the meeting uh, with President Putin by raising the concerns of the American people regarding Russian interference in the 2016 election. Uh, they had a very robust and lengthy exchange on the subject. Uh, the President pressed President Putin on more than one occasion regarding Russian involvement. Uh, President Putin denied such involvement, uh, as I think he has in the past. Uh, the two leaders agreed, though, that this is a substantial uh, hindrance in the ability of us to move the Russian-U.S. relationship forward and agreed to exchange further work regarding commitments of non-interference in the affairs of the United States and our democratic process, as well as those of other countries. So more work to be done in that regard. I'll have to take your questions. You got a referee, Sean? from Bloomberg News. Uh, can you tell us whether President Trump uh, said there would be said whether there would be any consequences uh, for Russia to the interference in the U.S. election? Did he spell out any specific consequences that Russia would face? And then also on the Syria ceasefire, when does it begin? And uh, what makes you think that the ceasefire will succeed this time when past U.S.-Russia agreements on a ceasefire? Uh, with regard to uh, the interference in the election, I think, you know, the President took note of actions that have been discussed by the Congress, uh, most recently additional sanctions that have been uh, voted out of the Senate uh, to make it clear as to the seriousness of the issue. But I think what the, what the two Presidents, I think, rightly uh, focused on is how do we move forward? Uh, how do we move forward from here? Because it's, it's not clear to me that we will ever come to some agreed upon resolution of that question between the two nations. So the question is, what do, what do we do now? Uh, and I think the relationship, and the President made this clear as well, is too important. And it's too important 
to not find a way to move forward, not dismissing the issue in any way, and I don't want to leave you with that impression. Uh, and that is why we've agreed to continue engagement and discussion around how do we secure a commitment that the, the Russian government has no intention of and will not interfere in our affairs in the future nor the affairs of others? Uh, and how do we uh, create a framework in which we have some capability to judge uh, what is happening in the cyber world and who to hold accountable? And this is obviously an issue that's broader than just U.S.-Russia, but it's certainly we see the manifestation of that threat uh, in the events of last year. And so I, I think, again, the President's rightly focused on how do we move forward from what may be simply an intractable disagreement at this point. As to the serious ceasefire, uh, I would say what, what may be uh, different this time, I think, is the level of commitment on the part of the Russian government. They see the uh, situation in Syria transitioning from the defeat of ISIS, uh, which we are progressing rapidly, as you know. And, and this is what really has led to this discussion with them as to what do we do to stabilize Syria once the war against ISIS is won. And Russia has the same, I think, interest that we do in having Syria become a stable a place, a unified place, but ultimately a, a place where we can facilitate a political discussion about their future, including the future leadership of Syria. So I think part of why we're — and again, we, we, we'll see what happens as to the ability to hold the ceasefire. But I think part of what's different is, is where we are relative to the whole war against ISIS, uh, where we are uh, in terms of the opposition's, uh, I think, position as to their strength within the country and the regime itself. You know, in many respects, people are getting tired. Uh, they're getting weary of the conflict. And I think we have an opportunity, we hope, to create the conditions. And this area in the South is our first, uh, I think, our first show of success. We're hoping we can replicate that elsewhere. Abby? Mr. Secretary, um, you spoke when you were speaking of the ceasefire about um, there being detailed information about who would enforce it. Can you give any more information on what conclusions were reached? And uh, you spoke of the future leadership of Syria. Do you still believe that Assad has no role in their government? I would like to defer on the specific roles in particular of security forces on the ground because there is — there are a couple of more meetings to occur. Uh, this agreement, I think, as you're aware, was uh, entered into between Jordan, the United States, and Russia. And we are — we have a very clear picture of who will provide the security forces, but we have a few more details to work out. And if I could, I'd like to defer on that until that is completed. I expect that will be completed within the next less than a week. Uh, the talks are very active and ongoing. Um, and your second question again. Um, does the administration still believe that Assad has no role in the future government of Syria? Yes. Our, our position continues to be that we see no long-term role for the Assad family or the Assad regime. We just — and we have made this clear uh, to everyone. We've certainly made it clear in our discussions with Russia uh, that we do not think Syria can achieve international recognition in the future, even if they work through a successful political process. Uh, the international community simply is not going to accept a Syria led by the Assad regime. And so if Syria is to be accepted and, and have a, a, a secure uh, — both secure and economic future, uh, it really requires that they find new leadership. Uh, we think it will be difficult for them to attract uh, both the humanitarian aid as well as the reconstruction assistance are going to be required because there just will be such a low level of confidence in the Assad government. Uh, so that continues to be the view. And as we've said, how Assad leaves is yet to be determined. But our view is that somewhere in that political process, uh, there'll be a transition away from the Assad family. Uh, Dimitri Sevastopoulos, Financial Times. On North Korea, did uh, President Putin agree to do anything to help the U.S. to put more pressure on North Korea? And secondly, you seem to have reached somewhat of an impasse with China in terms of getting them to put more pressure on North Korea. 
How are you going to get them to go beyond what they've done already? And what is President Trump going to say to President Xi on that issue tomorrow? We did have a, uh, a, a pretty good exchange on North Korea. I would say the Russians see it a little differently than we do. Uh, so we're going to continue those discussions uh, and ask them to do more. Uh, Russia does have economic activity with North Korea. But I would also hasten to add Russia's official policy is the same as ours, a denuclearized Korean peninsula. And so I think here again there is a difference in terms of view around tactics and pace. Uh, and so we will continue to work with them to see if we cannot persuade them uh, as to the urgency that we see. I think with respect to China, what our experience with China has been, and I've said this to others, it's, it's been a bit uneven. Uh, China has taken significant action, and then I think uh, for a lot of different reasons they paused and, and didn't take additional action. Uh, they then have taken some steps and then they paused. And there, are, I think in our own view there are a lot of perhaps explanations for why those pauses occur. But we've, we've remained very closely engaged with China, uh, both through our uh, dialogues that have occurred face to face, but also uh, on the telephone. We speak very frequently with them about the situation in North Korea. So there's a clear understanding between the two of us of our intent. And I think the, uh, the sanctions action that was taken here uh, just in the last week to 10 days uh, certainly got their attention in terms of their understanding our resolve uh, to bring more pressure to bear on North Korea by directly going after entities doing business with North Korea, regardless of where they may be located. Uh, we've continued to make that clear to China that we would prefer they take the action themselves, and we're still calling upon them to do that. So I would say we're, our engagement is unchanged with China, and our expectations are unchanged. No, we have not given up hope. You know, when you're in a, in a approach like we're using, and I call it the peaceful pressure campaign, a lot of people like to characterize it otherwise, but this is a campaign to lead us to a peaceful resolution. Because if this fails, we don't have very many good options left. And so it is a peaceful pressure campaign. And it's one that requires calculated increases in pressure, allow the regime to respond to that pressure, uh, and it takes a little time to let these things happen. You know, you enact the pressure, it takes a little while for that to work its way through. So it is going to require some level of patience as we move this along. But when we talk about our strategic patience ending, what we mean is we're not going to just sit idly by and we're going to follow this all the way to its conclusion. Just mentioned on the uh, DBRK, uh, we know the uh, China and Russia uh, recently said uh, they 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 ask uh, North Korea to uh, stop the uh, to freeze actually the, the nuclear activities, and also they asked the U.S. to uh, stop the uh, deployment of third system. So, did uh, uh, President Putin bring up his concern about the deployment of third system, and also what's the expectation of President? Uh, Trump on um, tomorrow's meeting with President Xi Jinping and other, other than uh, the DBRK issue. Thank you. Uh, the subject of that did not come up in the meeting with President Putin. Uh, in terms of, of the, uh, the progress of North Korea and this last missile launch, uh, again, those are some of the differences of views we have between ourselves in terms of tactics, how to deal with this. Uh, President Putin, I think, <laughs> Uh, has expressed a view not unlike that of China, that they would support a freeze for freeze. Uh, if we study the history of the last 25 years of engagement with various regimes in North Korea, this has been done before. And every time it was done, North Korea went ahead and proceeded with its program. The problem with freezing now, if we freeze where they are today, we freeze their activities with a very high level of capability. And we do not think it also sets the right tone for where these talks should begin. And so we're, we're asking North Korea to be prepared to come to the table with an understanding that these talks are going to be about how do we help you chart a course 
to cease and roll back your nuclear program. That's what we want to talk about. We're not interested in talking about how do we have you stop where you are today, because stopping where they are today is not acceptable to us. Margaret Tollov with Bloomberg. Um, could you uh, give us a roadmap? Did you agree on uh, a next set of talks uh, between the president and Mr. Putin? Um, and I, I guess I have kind of like a fluffy color question on general impressions. We thought this was a 30 minute meeting. It ended up being two hours and 16 minutes. That's a lot of time to watch uh, those two leaders interact and also to just, uh, I don't know, whatever. Any insights on those? Also, uh, real quickly. <laughs> Uh, any update on the dachas? Are they getting them back? And on Ukraine sanctions, to any resolution or progress on those? Thanks. Uh, okay, so the first question. Uh, next talk. The road next road. talks. There's no. There's no agreed next meeting between the presidents. There are agreed subsequent follow-up meetings uh, between various working-level groups at the State Department. Uh, we agreed to set up uh, a working-level group to begin to explore this framework agreement around the cyber issue. Uh, and this issue of non-interference. So those will be uh, ongoing at, with various staff levels. Who's leading that? Is that Rob Joyce on the separate? Well, in the, it'll be out of the State Department and the National Security uh, uh, adv Advisor's Office. Um, as to uh, the nature of the two hours and 15 minutes, uh, first, let me characterize the, the meeting was very constructive. The, the two leaders, I would say uh, connected very quickly. Uh, there was a, a very clear positive chemistry between the two. I think, again, and, and I think the positive thing I observed, and, and I've had many, many meetings uh, with President Putin before, uh, is there was not a lot of relitigating of the past. I think both of the leaders feel like there's a lot of things in the past that both of us are unhappy about. We're unhappy, they're unhappy. I think the, the perspective of both of them was this is a really important relationship, two largest nuclear powers in the world. It's a really important relationship. How do we start making this work? How do we live with one another? How do we work with one another? We, we simply have to find a way to go forward. And I think that was, that was expressed over and over, multiple times, I think by both uh, presidents this strong desire. It is a very complicated relationship today because there are so many issues on the table. But I think, um, and one of the reasons it took a long time, I think, is because once they met and, and got acquainted with one another fairly quickly, there was so much to talk about. All of these issues, uh, just about everything got touched on to one degree or another. And I think there was <clears throat> just such a level of engagement and exchange, neither one of them wanted to stop. Uh, several times I, I had to remind the president, people were sticking their heads in the door, and I think they even they sent in the first lady at one point to see if she could get us out of there, and uh, that didn't work either. But, yes, it's true. But, uh, but it was, uh, well, we went another hour after she came in to see us, so, so clearly she failed. Um, but uh, I think, you know, my, what, what I've described to you, the two hours and 15 minutes, it was an extraordinarily important meeting. I mean, there's just, there's so much for us to talk about. And it was a good start. Now, I would tell you, we spent a very, very lengthy period on Syria uh, with a great amount of detail exchanged on the agreement we had concluded today that was announced but also where we go and trying to get much greater clarity around how we see this playing out and how Russia sees it playing out. And where do we share a common view and where do we have a difference? And do we have the same objectives in mind? And I would tell you that by and large, our objectives are exactly the same. How we get there, we each have a view, but there's a lot more commonality to that than there are differences. So we want to build on the commonality and we spend a lot of time talking about next steps. Uh, and then where there's differences, we have more work to get together and understand maybe they've got the right approach and we've got the wrong approach. Uh, so there was a substantial amount of time spent on Syria. 
uh, just because it's we've had so so much activity going on with it. Secretary, can you say if the president was unequivocal in his view that Russia did interfere in the election, did he offer to produce any evidence or to convince Mr. Putin? Uh, the, Rus the Russians have asked for proof and evidence. Uh, I'll leave that to the intelligence community to address uh, the answer to that question. Uh, and again, I think, the, I think the president at this point, he pressed him and then, you know, felt like at this point, let's let's talk about how do we go forward. And I think that was the right place to spend our time rather than spending a lot of time having a disagreement that everybody knows we have a disagreement. Thank you guys very much and have a great evening.